Hi, I'm Susanna Johnson Malbro, publisher of the Southern View Magazine. And today I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing a man that I met just recently, Mr. Brian Benoit. And Brian is the owner of Benoit's Gallery Indigenous Art. That's a mouthful, but he's going to tell us today what that all means. So thank you so much for granting me the interview. Thank I you. really appreciate it. And just to let you know, we're in the studio, so I have an opportunity to look at all the wonderful things that he's painted. Uh, it's so colorful. Uh, you can see the, the creativity. So I am just as interested as the viewers in finding out everything we need to know about Brian Benoit and Benoit's gallery. Okay. So before we get started into like all of your creativity, tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Well, I'm originally from Lafayette, Louisiana. Grew up uh, in the Washington Heights area uh, near Truman on the north side of Lafayette, on the upper side of Lafayette. Uh, went to high school here, went to college here, got married here, uh, and all my influences is South Louisiana. South Louisiana. Right. So, you know, born and raised a Louisiana kid, so that's me. Okay, and the interesting thing, because Brian and I had a chance to talk a little while ago, and I found out that he grew up in Washington Heights, mm -hmm. which is where I grew up. Right. So our families no doubt know each other, but surely you were in school, I'm thinking, with my younger brothers and sisters, you know, so, because right. it's at, you know, Washington Heights. Right, and right. Well, I graduated around you know, 89. 89. Yeah, 89 from okay. Acadiana High. So. Acadiana High. Right. So yes, I've had sisters and brothers for 10 years. Right. So that's really exciting to know, homegrown yeah. from Lafayette, Louisiana. That's right, that's right. And how long have you been married to your beautiful wife? 18 years. And we've been together 22 years. That's awesome. So, That's awesome. I'm glad I got that right, though. Yeah, because she's sitting <laughs> right here in the studio. I always get the numbers wrong, but we got married in 2000, so we 2018, so it's easy. That's easy to remember. What month? September. That's okay. September. <laughs> it was the month of September. September 9th. It's, it's, oh, okay, even better. So yes. I was wondering if Joy was out here doing this. <laughs> no, I remember. I remember. I'm, I'm, at least I'm good with that. That's good. So I did go through your bio, and you've done a lot in your life. But one thing I saw is that you were a commercial construction project superintendent. That's like for a, that's really long, for like several years. Yes. So tell us what that actually entailed. Well, I I grew up working in construction. My father's a brick mason, so he's been in, he's been his own uh, business owner for for all his life, forty. So I started out working in the construction industry okay. with my father. So I learned, I picked up the trade, and when I went to USL, I studied architecture, so it, construction was in my background. Right. And uh, when, I when I left USL, I, I started doing construction superintendent building and construction projects, commercial projects. So I worked in the commercial industry, and I did, uh, we built hotels. Awesome, I managed hotels. Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. did you uh, work on any of the hotels in yeah, the one, a couple of, um, there was a hotel in, on Pinhook, uh, right behind Outback Steakhouse. Okay. So I built that one yeah. for a company that was out of uh, California. Mm -hmm. And previous to that, I worked for a company here. We built some apartment complexes. And then I did a, another apartment, uh, hotel out of Texas. So I would travel around. I was just going to say, you had a chance to travel right. quite a bit. Correct. All Correct. right. Correct. And where's Miss Joey from? She's from Kaplan, okay. Louisiana. <laughs> Still not too far away. Not too far, but I met her actually in Baton Rouge, so she was trying to be a city girl. So, <laughs> but she came, she came back down and we was at a Zotti club, and I, I met her, and she was in, at, the, at the Hamilton club. Uh -huh. So, but she looked, she was dressed city fine, so I knew she wasn't. But then when I started talking, she was from Kaplan, so it was like, uh, uh huh. And it worked out perfect. It worked out perfect. Yes. Awesome. I was just wondering, you know, mainly because you traveled quite a bit. I never met her until, you know, I did at a couple of events uh, months ago. Right. But you guys make an absolutely adorable couple. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I like right. that. So anyway, construction mm -hmm. to painting? Yes. How does that happen? Well, my background, when, when I went to USL, I studied architecture. And within architecture, they had a unique way of getting us to be creative. And we started doing um, collages, paper collages mm -hmm. to tell stories. And that brought about with me an ability to create 
ideas from my mind mm -hmm. and manifest them. So that's how I started to be artistic. And before that, I, I loved to draw as a child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that was always within me. But then, you know, growing up, father said, you have to do something, come work with me. So I started to work with him. And that was like, when you looked at it as growing up as a profession, you know, art wasn't a profession in the black community. You, you know, for, for me, we had to get a job, you know. So it was always in the back of my mind that I loved to be creative. So as I got older and the construction, uh, my, the construction area was doing pretty good, but I got laid off uh, 2008, you know, around that time when the economy started getting rough with Bush and Obama was coming in. And the economy got rough and the construction industry in Lafayette just kind of ceased. So I just found myself without a job. I got laid off. And I took time for myself. I had to do a little, little minor surgery on my knee. And I was talking to Joe and we just said, well, just give me some stuff to kind of keep me busy. And I went back to what I, I'm, I'm normal doing. I love to draw. So she got me some stuff. I started drawing. And hey. it just, well, actually, it's just drawing. Just the drawing. Okay. And then I said, well, give me some more stuff because it's too bland. I said, give me some, some paint, some watercolor. Uh -huh. Because I like to draw watercolor paper because it's thick. And she got me that and I started. And it was just, when the color hit the paper, that's when I just saw it. And then it just started going and going and going. And she was looking at it, being the great wife that she is, she, she put it on Facebook to say, let people see it. Mm -hmm. And one after the other, they started to sell. I, started, I sent the first one to California and to other places all over the place. Before Lafayette even knew who I was. I was sending paintings to other parts of the United States off of just Facebook. And what type of uh, paintings? Um, I started doing fleur de lis, you know, things that it, with, the, with the Saints was very popular, you know, at the time. So I was doing some Saints fleur de lis and I was painting fleur de lis for, uh, for other people that loved them. I painted a few for my wife's, for people in her office. Mm -hmm. And they loved them. So that was the first kind of getting into it, kind of doing things for people because that's what they wanted. But, the, but what I was doing was more about Creole story. I was doing all the stories that my mom would tell me, and my father would tell me as a, when I was a little kid. I was doing those, and I would just keep those at home. And I did about three or four for my mom. And the, the beginning, those old or earlier pages are in her, home, in, her, in her house. And from that point, that's when I just started doing more of the, our story, the Creole story of, of how and where we came from and how we evolved, and how we lived, just the, just the everyday life. And those stories just took off. So the paintings at your mom's house, are those framed? Yes. Have you taken pictures and maybe kind of shared that like on Facebook? Actually, in the beginning, there was all like the logos, that's the old houses on the on my on my logo, all those are the, those paintings that, that she has. So all the, the earlier stuff that I used to show on Facebook, mm -hmm. if you ever go back to my earlier first back first Facebook page mm -hmm. post, all my older stuff is there. But now I painted so many more paintings that they get lost in the lost. shuffle. But they, I keep them. My mom has some, and I have. This is one of them also. This ball and white is one of the first ones I've ever painted up here. Mm -hmm. So you can see the style is tremendously different. Yeah. So I was kind of teaching myself how to actually move the paint because mm -hmm. learning to paint and mixing colors is, is like, for me, the most uh, basic thing. So once I learned that, everything else was good. I know, and, you know, I can see they're, they're so bright, they're vivid. Um, you know, they're very dramatic, and I can see like the collage, because when I first walked into the studio, I think um, that might have been the painting that was up, mm -hmm. I think, and I just started looking. Each painting tells a story right. within itself. Right. Well, for, for me with the collage, when you look at my, my work, it's layers upon layers. Mm -hmm. But there's there's more than one story going, so, so it's a storyline within a storyline. And how I, I perceive, Kind of like with construction, you, you build a foundation and you add a home on top of it. So everything is coming together to build a home, so to speak. So all these different pieces that you put on the on property has to be then assembled. Well, that's the way I kind of look at my paintings. There's an idea, there's a canvas, and there's all the different pieces that has to be put together. And by when I put them together, these are storylines that actually tell us a certain story. And the story is through colors, images, vibration, vibrancy. When, when the viewer perceives it, whatever they have within them, they perceive it that way. So everyone will perceive my work differently, or any work differently. So for me, it's just I've been, I, I try to create pieces that speak of what I'm trying to say. Everybody has a, has a saying that they are, or something they want to project. Mine is just <clears throat> history, the 
you know, happiness, sadness, yeah. struggle, support, anything that, that, that as an emotion. I don't like to paint scenes. I like to paint the emotions behind it. So it's different from going out and painting a scene rather than painting a feeling or an emotion that the scene encompasses. I see that. And, you know, how, and like this one is huge. So no doubt someone requested that from you. Correct, correct. Because I'm looking at all the different sizes, mm -hmm. and um, no doubt this one was classic here. Right, right, right. And then you came up with the theme yourself? Well, the idea was with the African American heritage. This is their poster, the one I gave to the poster. Mm -hmm. they, they, she had a, uh, Mr. Nell Shagwa, she had a, a general idea. She wanted the Liberty Bell, and whenever the, the for, for, for African Americans, whenever the bell sounds, it's just another success for us. So what I did was, you know, I chose the bell as a, the Liberty Bell as a sign of freedom. But our successes is we've, we've you know, we've flown planes, we've been the president, we've been to college, we've, we've conquered consciousness. <laughs> you know, the women have risen up, you know, we've, we've, we've looked at to, to bring our kids to school, all under the impression of what this symbolized. And the crack for me represented that. <laughs> when oppression is, a, when people are oppressed, there's, there can be no liberty. So until there's freedom for all, there's no injustice. That's no justice. There's no justice. Right. And that's what I said too. I mean, it tells a story. Correct. You Correct. know. Sometimes you'll probably have to share that, but I'm sure like art, well, everybody sees it differently. And that's what I like. I don't I like them to perceive it their way. And if they have a question which they all do, then that's when I pretty much if they ask me my opinion, I'll tell them where and, and how the idea came about. Um have any of your children shared that love or painting? My son, he draws a little bit, but he stopped a long time ago. We used to have, we had a little argument about who was better. <laughs> I remember that. Remember he that did joke? not. He did. And Joey was the, the, uh, judge. the judge. And she chose him and I got mad. Oh my goodness. Why'd she choose him over you? Why not? Well, she saw him, but she saw him. You know, future talent. <laughs> right, right, right. But he took after you. Everything okay, he has course. comes directly from of you. Course, of course, of course. So it's a win-win. Of course, of course. All right. Um, how is it running the gallery? I mean, you know, um, any hey, challenges? To, yes. Really? Share, as an artist, well, as an artist, you know, I'm more conditioned to produce an art. Mm -hmm. And as a business owner, that's the second level of learning how to run the business. Once you learn how to run a business, or for me, learning how to run a business was was the most challenging part. So the art is, is just came instantly. I mean, it's, it's nothing. But the, the 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 business side was something that I had to learn to do. So, but it's not hard. Once I learned to run the business, it's not hard at all. Right, because that, for the most part, is like running any type of business. Right. Uh, a little more challenging. Right. You know, we always hear the story of the starving artist, right. but we also hear the story of successful artists. Well, and for me, the story of the start. So. Right. The story of the starving artist is to, be, to me, they want to starve. I mean, you know, so they choose lot. to starve. Well, yeah. I mean, any, anybody choose. If you get a job at Walmart, you're going to want to work at Walmart mm -hmm. every day, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to be an artist, you're going to have to work every day. Yeah. Now, selling your art is just. I think that's where the starving artists come because they can't sell the art. But if you, for me, and it's all about perception. I, 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 outside of myself, I might be wrong, <laughs> but my perception is my perception. If you put just as much as your passion within your art mm -hmm. to sell your art, then there should be no problem. And if you're giving people what they want, not I mean, is that does that make sense? Well, because well, I'm going to yeah. buy from you. If this is something that I want. Right, but for an artist, I can't paint for you. Okay. Because then once you buy a painting, you're not coming back. Okay. Or you might not come back. Right. Then I have to, I can't paint for everyone. Oh. I, that's why I don't paint scenes. I don't paint what people think. I don't, I don't I'm, not, I'm not trying to think for people. I'm an artist, so my perception is to bring beauty into the world of chaos. There's a, there's a lot of people that can perceive what I do. And there's a lot of people who perceive that don't like what I do. The ones that like what I do, that's who I'm here for. So my art that I that I that I that I create is going to only grab certain people. 
Certainty as that, art does. As, as art does. So for me, I just focus on what I do. The people who like the art comes to me. So therefore, I don't see the starving part. Because if your passion, again, is strong enough, it will call those to you. Well, but you don't want to starve. That, those are not your, your aspirations. Well, if it's if a gift. successful. Right. See, if a gift is given to you. Prior business. Right. If a gift is given to you, then it should provide for you. So I just stand on, if I have a gift given to me by God, then that, God, that gift will provide. I like that. I like the way you say it. Uh, I like that perspective. You know, which is something that will no doubt keep right. you successful. And you, you have to believe, this, it's, have it's to also believe. believing in yourself. So that's why I don't believe in starving, because if I know this gift came from the Most High, then why am I starving? Right. There is no need for starvation. That means if you're starving, you're not focused and you're not in sync with yourself, mm -hmm. and you're not walking your path. Now you're starving because maybe you want something. See, when I started, I couldn't have everything I wanted, so I had to sacrifice. I gave paintings away. I gave a lot of paintings away, just so people could say, "Wow!" Look they at have this. to see. They have to see it. So see even it. though I wasn't star, I'm, I'm giving it to you because I want you to have it. Well, you know what? In a way, that's marketing. It is. That's marketing is. because those folks are going to take it somewhere else, and then right. other people it'll be exposed to other people. That's correct. It's, it's advertising and marketing. That's correct. And sometimes and, you don't always charge people. You and, know, and, and you have to true. let it work. You have to let it work. And it's all a part of growing and finding your, 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 your niche. You know, I had to find, I had to create a space. When I came downtown, you know, I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know the hours of people come down here. So I had to learn the mechanics of downtown. Then I had to learn the mechanics of how I wanted to be perceived downtown. Then once I absorbed that, all of the things that I wanted to manifest, I just created a, 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 a vision of how I wanted my gallery to to be run and to, to be to be viewed and perceived and and just uh, absorbed and that's what I started to do so I'm not really a business owner so to speak I am what I am. well you know in um, in hindsight when you look at the downtown area I would say some years ago if you would have maybe had a gallery downtown it may not have had the same effect that you have now. And I say that now because we have so many festivals and arts and entertainment. There's so much going on that it brings more people. So in essence, it ends up being, at least I think, a really good location for you. Right. Yeah, it's good because when being down here, you, again, you get everything that Lafayette has to offer. I mean, mm -hmm. they, always, they always have anything, so they're they marketing Lafayette as a destination place. Yeah. So being down here actually works for the art community right. and for me and for the culture. And the more activities you know we have, right. I, I just again still think back to when I worked in the downtown area, it was mostly like shopping. You had the stores, you know. At that time that's what that's what was going on. Right. And now you've got more of the art right. downtown. Yeah. But it's activities that need to bring folks into downtown because usually downtown is like a whole other city. Right. Correct. You know? That's and correct. we've started to to move away from, from that, but we're coming back it's and coming back. Downtown yeah. is a place that, you know, people can come by and right. eat, entertain, right. drink. Right. Should I tell people that you offered me a drink? He did. Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to <laughs> calm, calm down. So, we, you know, at the art gallery here, we do a little wine and cheese and fruits. So, you know. Yeah, and you know, I have to say, situation. and I, I was aware that, you know, you had like an opening. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to make it, but I was following it on Facebook. Um, so, when I had the opportunity um, to attend the Black History function, and then you had the painting. I thought, oh, I'll get a chance to meet him. I'll get to see, you know, the person behind the art because I was looking at it online, following you on your website, you know, and just kind of checking it out and all. Then I could say I was like so glad to get one of these paintings by the press. So, kind of tell me, like, what makes you decide to put like a what a count, a number, or to to. 
put so many in production. I don't have the right term. Right. Right. What, what I do, when I create artwork, certain artworks, such as this piece, I'll create uh, what in the art in the art world is called limited edition uh, artist prints or posters or whatnot. And what that does is it's just a limited amount that's produced off of a single image. Uh, so for, for this one, it was 25. So we produce 25 artist edition prints. And what I do is um, I create the prints on mat boards, and then I actually paint each one of them differently, and I number them 1 to 25. That way I can tell the story of our history mm -hmm. and not produce the same image over and over and over. So I'm actually giving the viewers something that they can, when they're looking at it, they can start to see a storyline. Mm -hmm. So for instance, this one might be Barack, and then I have Dick Gregory. So on the other prints, we have so many, you got Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you got so many characters in our history that I needed, I needed a way to tell the story, not just with one painting, because it's too much information. So I came up with a way to tell our story <laughs> in a different way in, in limited uh, edition prints. Now I'm curious, okay. <laughs> I have number 23. Right. Okay. Well, here's the mystery. So. If you would actually look at 1 through 25, uh -huh. you uh -huh. But do you still have, like, a copy? Do you I have photos of photos all 25. Of so you know So I know the story. You know the story. And I, 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 my mom has one. We have one. So I think my family, we actually own three. So I really know the story. So one day what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually... Uh, just put out the story and just tell people if they can. Because what it does is if you have, what number? 23. So like, it says, let's say the person who bought number two would ever want to sell. Mm -hmm. You can actually start collecting all 25. Right. And that's your history. Right. So that for me, it's a way of telling a history and spreading it amongst our people. I looked at it, but now that you're, you're telling me the story behind it, I'm like, okay, so... I don't know who has, like you said, right. what image is on this one, what image is on number 25. And I just happened to be number 23 because once you guys uh, started announcing that you only had a few left in the right. edition, they were just gone. Yeah, when we when we opened up the sales, I think we sold 17 in the first day or the wow. first hour. I think it was about two hours, we sold 17 of them. And we only had 25, so... By the time the event was, the gala was, we, we, had, we had sold them out that day. You only had three left? Yeah, we had three left, so. Oh. It was pretty good, so that was very I successful. I know you only had three left, because then I left my seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Stop in the middle of the event. Right, right. <laughs> uh, here, Joy, you know, can, oh, I want this, you right. know. Mm -hmm. So that was exciting, you know, for me, because I never purchased a limited edition of anything. Right. Before, so it was really exciting. More exciting to know that you know it's from a local artist, and it captures our history. So that was the important, you know, for me. So we know you did like the limited edition for you know the African American history um, culture. Are there any others that you foresee having limited editions? What determines if you'll end up doing like a limited edition? It, the it just depends on the if I'm doing it for an organization or if I'm doing it for myself, I don't want to limit them. But it just depends. It just it's how see, I'm never going to do this painting again. So and I did I did one other one for Exotic Culture that again, and that was they wanted to do the same thing that we did for, for these guys. So that was their idea. They wanted to follow this idea. So I produced it for them, and I think we sold. I think it's 24 or 23. Still got two left of those. Uh, so that, those are the only two that I produce limited edition prints off of because we, I was actually doing it for an organization and it was a fundraiser for, for the African American uh, heritage, it was a fundraiser for them, but for the extravaganza it was just, they wanted to produce it to tell the, the, the Creole story. So I did the same thing for them, I told the different stories of the different musicians that played it because it was their 32nd annual, so I, again you got 32 years you had all these different musicians. So starting from the very first one to now, it's a whole history right. of the culture of the, the, the music and, and the extravagance and the food of the Creole people. So when I was dealing with Dustin Cravens, his view is bringing it. When I, when I started to talk about the extravagance with them, there was no, 
that there's a lot, so many limited photos of the event mm -hmm. to be documented. So these are our history that's being brought to us every day is really not being properly documented in my mind. My, my it's idea. captured, not documented. Exactly. Because when I go to search for certain things, I can't, I can't pull that information up, so it means it's not documented properly. Mm -hmm. So we, with, with Dustin, he was trying to say, man, we need to try to, I like, he liked what I do because, like I tell people, it's also documenting our story. He, I, I use photographs and picture clippings and newspaper cutouts, all of it, because it dates and it gives you a time reference. So it's actually valid information. So I actually use those things to actually document and tell the story. So that's what we're trying to do with this extravaganza. So next year we're going to do another round of it to try to tell that story. So it's, for me, it's very exciting because it gives me the opportunity to work with people and, to, and with Lafayette and, and the culture and just dig up all, everything I can dig up and just put it out there for us to Yeah. Do you do portraits? I don't. Are you considering doing portraits on the way here? I was thinking, I wonder if you want to do a portrait of me. I would do you, but I don't do portraits per se the traditional way. Right. I wasn't looking for it right. to be in the I, traditional way. I've never done one, but I've, I, I know how I would do it. Because mm -hmm. I just. I, do you need a model? Of course. A guinea? Of course. <laughs> if you're willing. I know. <laughs> Why not? Yes, yes, yes. I've never done it, but I'm, I'm interested in doing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it just adds to it, and it then you, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I, I tend not to do them because it. people are so picky with their face. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna get a picture. You'd be alright. Yeah, but if you're not doing like a one of the caricatures or something like right. that, you know, then you'd probably be capturing a person in their natural state. Right. I mean, you don't do that, so. They just get, people are so sensitive. Yeah. That's that's the only thing. You're just so sensitive. <laughs> Especially if that don't look like me. I'm like, yeah, that's how I saw you. <laughs> True. But that, you know what, that goes along with when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. You really don't know how you sound that's until correct. you hear yourself that's on correct. a recording. That's correct. Caught me by surprise. I'm like, I didn't know I sounded like right. that. Right. Which makes my voice, for the most part, I don't want to get into talking about voice, I'm talking about painting. But you know, it's, it's all like the same. I know. I you know, I don't sound like that, but evidently that is me. And folks are like, Oh well, you've got this accent and I'm like, Oh no. But you have to listen to yourself. So mm -hmm. same thing like with the pictures and paintings, you have to look, you know, and I've I've done that. I've had a I actually had someone paint me. Did you like it? I do. I do. I'm not as critical because you know, to me, it's like this is me. Right. You can't change it. Right. Yeah. I mean, of course, you could add a something, something <laughs> if you wanted to. Right. Right. So we'd have to get you in the right mood to make sure you capture the very I'm, best. I'm making you. That... <laughs> I'm making you as, as I see it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not scared. <laughs> okay. Um, one thing I wanted to find out, just maybe sharing with young artists, mm -hmm. you know, that are out there, because I cannot recall that we've had many African Americans owning galleries. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you had to see some young artists out there and um, do you want to give them some input or guidance on opening a gallery, what would you tell them? Have fun. Okay. That's it. That's it. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be frustrating. Well hopefully well right. but just have fun. I mean if you can stay childlike with all the things that you do, that's my new saying now. Say it again. Be childlike. Childlike. Don't be too adulterous. Oh. Mm -hmm. When we're too adulterous, we got too many problems. We got too many can't, don't do this, don't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Fear based. Children don't have no fear. So I'm trying to be more childlike. Mm -hmm. So if you want to open a gallery, just, just be childlike. But we definitely want to tell them to get a little business knowledge as well. Yeah, yeah they do. Yes. You ask me, you don't need I didn't have any. Oh, Joan came in. She didn't have any. Well, but you, you learn it. You're intelligent. That's my point. You learn on the job. Yeah. There are some things you can learn on the job. But it's, you know. It's if you know how to pay your bills, you're going to be all right. If you can pay the right bill and the rent, you'll be all right. The rest just kind of falls. You see, we, we, for me, I say that only because every interview you do, they will tell you to go get training. They will take you out of your creative mind. So you cannot focus on going to get trained with business when you're trying to train yourself to be creative.
creative. That's two different brain waves. You want to split yourself in two. So sometimes you have to do, like you said, be childlike, and then. If you're starting out, if you, for me, if you, if a, if a, if a young artist is starting out, all he had is his creativity. That's that's his foundation, and that's what's going to take him up high. His business sense won't do anything for him, in my picture. Now, because when I say business sense, I mean expanding. See, running, owning a business, paying your paying your rent, are you lights and this? That's not own. That's just like an apartment. So this building to me is run like an apartment. The business is when now I have to, I have customers that I have to service. I have this, I gotta go service and service and service. So that service is to me business. But the building and me in here painting is just creativity. If I stifle that, everything goes away. So tell folks how long you've been um, with the gallery downtown. We've been physically downtown five years. And I've been physically running a business I know, out of the house for about three, four years. So before I came here, I was actually running a business out of the house. How was that? Fun. <laughs> no challenges? I always thought, you know, sometimes it's like you'd have to get out of one room, go into a room, and put yourself in that but that's, business but, mode. See, but that's, again, see, you're going into business mode. You're creating obstacles. When, for me, there shouldn't be obstacles. When I, when I came out of one room into the other, I was still in my pajamas. And I still had the TV on. I'm laughing because I'm thinking back <laughs> to when I had a business at home and I couldn't do that. I had to actually get out of my pajamas because I was in my pajamas, I was in more of a lazy man mode. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, to me, mm -hmm. and that's what worked for me for the type of business that I had, I started getting up and getting dressed. Mm -hmm. And when it was time for lunch, I got out of the office. Right. And have lunch in another room of the house. But, but see, that's you, what worked for me. Yeah, and you and basically that that put you back into work mode at your house. So you created a work environment at home. Yeah. And that's perfect. That's why I tell everyone, for me and for anybody who's trying to be or a young artist who's trying to be creative and start a business, you have to find what works, what works for themselves. For yeah. Because for me, I don't work well with structured time. Because I can start a project and five hours later, it's, I'm like, well, it's five hours. So structured time doesn't work for me. So I had to find something that worked. And, and when I'm doing my art, I get lost in time. So that is no right. time. So, right. you know, if there's no time, there's no structure. So I would be up at three in the morning painting. And then by nine o'clock in the morning, I was sleeping. You know, I was sleeping half the day. I was like, it's not working. <laughs> so I had to find a rhythm. Right. So, I work from three to like nine in the morning. Mm -hmm. I go home and I do stuff around the house, and I might come back at seven at night to ten. Yeah. So those hours worked. Now being that way was the same way when I started. I couldn't do anything that took me out of my creativity because at that time it was so sensitive. You see what I'm saying? When you, when, as a young artist, we're speaking about young artists. Mm -hmm. When they're trying to start a business, they're so not confident. See, creativity is nothing to be, you don't even know what creativity is. You're just in it, and you're just doing it. And when people say, what is that? You're like, it's this. <laughs> There's no definitions. Right. So and then you put me into a structured business sense and say, well, you got to do this, this, and that. It pulls you dramatically away from that unknown creative energy you was just in that amazes people. For me to go run a business, that don't amaze anyone. So if I tell somebody how my business runs, they go, ah, oh, we can do that any day. But when they come in and see my artwork, they can't put it together. Right. But that was most important. That is the business, not this building, not my hours, not my service. What I can do with a canvas mm -hmm. is the whole entire spectrum of my business. So I focus on that. I like that you've got a very unique outlook on that. Thank you. But it's got to work for you. Yes. And that's great. Yes. So, it makes me think when you're talking about the painting, getting up maybe at different times, starting at different times, um, do you ever get to a point where you're not, you don't have anything to create? There's nothing new? Or is there, really? Or is there, okay, I was wondering if there was ever. No, I get, I get downtime, then I just stop. 
I'll just disappear for two months. Two months? <laughs> mm -hmm. I go, really? I go cut, I live in the country. Okay. So I go cut grass and run and walk in the field and run, run my dogs, mm -hmm. you know, just do stuff. You know, just do summer projects or if it's in the fall, just do projects around the house, just do other things, take my wife and go out of town. You know, we, we decide, to, we, we try to get away, you know. So in that two months, there's a lot of activity going on. So I don't focus on art. All of a sudden, I'll start having this. You know, like, my, what's wrong? Why you, why your lip is hanging? I don't know. She said, oh, you need to go do art. Yeah. I said, yes, call me back. Right. So I respect my craft. Uh -huh. And my craft meaning the energy that, that creates the paintings. These are these flashes. Uh -huh. You know, like, I dream a lot and I wake up and I go paint. So it's just flashes. When I don't have that flash, that means I might be out of sync. So that means I just got to go recharge. And then once I'm recharged, man, I, it just comes. And then once I'm back in here, all these things, I just can't stop. Because I got all these unfinished paintings that I got to finish. So that's what keeps me busy. So I'll, I'll, I, have, I might have 50 paintings on, on, on this wall that I have to finish. They look finished. Nah, they, they just sketches. This really? Took, yeah, this is like two hours. All these took about two hours. Too. Really? But when I'm in here, that's, that's, this is what I do in the mornings. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll, de I'll I'll do new 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 sketches, new ideas in the mornings, and then in the afternoons I'll actually pull one out and work on it. Right. Do you offer painting lessons? I haven't, but recently so many people have been asking me, and so we are starting. We're we're, we're talking. We're in talks about doing maybe doing some workshops. Mm -hmm. So maybe by next year I can have some type of. Program because when you do class, you gotta have at least a program and a plan. Right. You know what? I, you know, something structured. No, for them, if I'm gonna yeah, teach, yeah, that's structured. To. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree with that. When, once I take it out outside of myself, see, I'm structured within. Yeah. Which y'all can't see. It's in the unknown. But when I'm pulling it out and teaching, then I have to give that other person or you something structured to follow. So I, I do have a plan because I did teach summer two summers ago. It was a summer program. It was art. Wore me out. Really? I had to go to sleep every afternoon. What age group? It was like the nine and ten to the thirteen and fourteen they age group. Uh, it, was, it was it was lively, but they wore me out. Wow. But and then that's when I knew I had to have a, a structure because I went in there with no plan. I said, like, "We're going to just get them to do them now. They want what are we doing next? What are we doing this? What is this for?" So I said, "Okay, I got to keep their minds. Uh, uh, what is it? Occupied because." Like five minutes, they want something else. You know, I'll finish with this one. What's, what's next? I'm like, you know, so. Well, and they absorb quickly right, too. Right, right, and they fast, fast learn. Fast. So we, you know, we. I've, I've been asked. I've been asked. I've been asked. So we, we actually, with the commitment, we might be doing a workshop. So we don't. I don't know. So art lessons is in the plans. We just coming up with the plan. That's good. It's really been a pleasure. Okay. Sitting with you, it's hearing been your story, uh, and you are talkative, and that's really great. Thank yeah. you so much You're for welcome. that. Is there anything um, you'd like to share with the viewing audience? Come and see us; you'll be amazed. All right. You want to go ahead and give the address of the uh, gallery? We're located downtown Lafayette, five thirty-five and a half Jefferson Street. The number here is three one. Three three seven. Three four one two six three three nine. I don't know my business number because they always call me on my cell number. It's a, do you want to give your cell number out now? Yeah, area code eight three two eight one six eight nine seven seven. That number has been with me for so long that I just tell everybody to call me on that. Exactly. So the off the business number is like you know, I have a, it's a whole different phone. I was like, man, just call me on my cell. That's you know that's how we operate. Everything's cell phone. Now. And we can find you on the web. Find us on the web, uh, www.benoitgallery.com. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Brian Benoit, or Benoit Gallery on Facebook. And we on Instagram, Brian Benoit, or Benoit Gallery on Instagram. All right. Great. After uh, we close out here, we're just going to take a little walk in the studios and I'll capture some of the images okay. and uh, share that with our audience. So, again, this has been another interview by the Southern View Magazine. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
Uh, again, you'll be able to see this interview um, on YouTube. It'll be on our Facebook page and our website. And you'll also have the article in the July issue of the magazine. Thanks so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it.